Hello and welcome back to the Final Fantasy Tactics All Oracles Challenge being recorded here in May of 2022. Hope you're doing well wherever and whenever you are. Today we are heading to the Lost Sacred Precincts. This is the battle with Bulk. And it's one that normally is rather forgettable, like a lot of the battles in the final part of this game when you have Orlando and all the overpowered characters by this part of the game. You're just charging through these final battles to the end, and then it's and then it's over. This was a huge roadblock for me with this Oracle party. What you're going to see is a successful run of the battle, of course, but this took quite a bit of practice. I think I did maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 attempts at this battle before I was able to actually successfully finish it. And the big problem here is that Bulk tends to not get very aggressive. He tends to uh, ping you with his little blast gun and then gets out of there. And then he lets the Tiamats come up and blast you with all their stuff. So the secret here, you're going to see us, we, we sat way, way, way back. We just didn't have enough to stay alive long enough if we moved forward. He's got move HP up, which means that it's going to take five life drains to hit him if he gets a move between us. It's going to take an extra life drain. So if he gets one move between our attacks, it's, it's going to be just about over for us because those guys are going to take us out uh, easily. All of my characters are equipped with white robes. White robes are great for this battle because they, they half your elemental damage, fire, ice, and lightning. So the gun enemy, the gun weapons from the chemist and Bulk himself are going to be cut in half in their damage. And also the l ranged attacks from the, the Hydra things, the Tiamat things. So they've got a fire one and a lightning one that uh, use the little triple thunder and triple fire. Now, if they get all three of theirs to hit a party member, even at full health with white robes on, they don't give many uh, hit points. But if they get all three of theirs to hit of the triple fire, they kind of are random within a within a area of effect, then they're going to go down. But if they get like one or two to land and the other two miss, then uh, they're okay. So I've got Germanus boots and white robes on everybody. The pee bags, the bags are on the females. Ramza has a, a stick that's not really going to help much at all. So in the first round, I waited with the, the group on the left, and then I had the group on the right move so that we're all in this formation right here. And that is to do this right here. I got Bulk to jump across the, the gap there, bring himself into range of us. So we are luring him over to our side. Now the big thing is we have got to get four life drains to land on him before he gets an action to move away or run away from us. If he does, it's going to take five. Uh, we also have to keep everyone alive. So check this out. The two enemies they're going to get a turn right there are the two that I do not want to get action. So they are the... Um, the, the Hydra thing and the Tiamat thing. So those are the ones that have those long range triple attacks. So if I move this character down here to one of those flat places, they have no they have um, no vertical tolerance on their area of effect that they target with those triples. So if there's just one square with no other squares of the same level around it, they'll all three hit that square no matter what. So that's why I move her up here. To bring that Tiamat thing up, it's going to attack on the roof there where there's two squares. So all three will not land on the same character, at least guaranteed. They still could, but they won't guaranteed land on that same character. So now with this one, I could move her up to these squares and tar actually target bulk with one of these. I could do that. And this is what I'm doing. I'm thinking about it. If I move her there and target a spell, though, those guys are going to take her out easily. They're going to move up. They're going to target one of their triple thunders or triple fires, and all three will hit her because there's no squares that have a similar height square around them. So this is where I'm kind of looking to see if there's anything useful that she can do. She can't really move up um, closer. I don't want her moving up closer to provide a juicy target for them, so I actually just have her wait right there. So that turned out to be really key because now that one, that uh, Hydra thing is going to move up. This is the triple fire. You can see it's do it's doing great damage, but that's being chopped in half, remember, by the white robe. So imagine that. Now, so that it's spread its damage out between the two of them, which means they both get to stay alive. If it had all targeted one of them, then that, that one would have gone down. Okay, so now these are the low chances to land. Everything in this battle has really low fate, which is really frustrating. So the bad compatibilities here with bulk, they have like a 53 or 57% chance to land on them, which is really, really sad. Um, so that one actually did land. The, uh, the glacier gun there does take out one character. She's out of the battle. Uh, big damage even with, the, uh, even with having from the white robe. 
So the Behemoth doesn't really have too much for long, long range things. The Hydra things are what we really have to worry about. Rams is going to get some lines here. So now the timing works out nicely with me doing all this waiting. We... It doesn't quite work like this, but we do have a, a CT advantage here because we've done so much waiting. Um, our seat, we've gotten turns quicker than the other guys. So we've got turns lined up here. The other guys have all moved and acted. So their CT is going, that goes all the way down to zero. Um, if you just, you know, do one of the other, CT doesn't go down all the way to zero. If you do nothing, it go, goes down even less. So we have a bit of a, a speed and time advantage here. Once you get to the middle of the battle like this, you'll notice that it seems like, wow, life drain in the first round takes like, eight actions before it goes up and now it's only two and that's because those enemies are burning their ct that's a, a kind of an oversimplified way to put it okay so now i really just need everything to line up here i've got to get these life drains to go off and i need to keep enough characters alive while they're charging for them to go off so rams has got to get his to land he, even with uh, not so bad compatibility, has like a 72% chance to land. So that's the, the highest number I saw in this battle. So Rams is going to get his to land. Boom. Here, here comes the next one. This one, I think, was also a lower chance. That might have been a 53 or 57, but that one lands right there. Now, here is, this is critical. I thought it was like, oh no, the battle might be over. It all comes down to this. She's got to move up here. She's in range. Life drain is going to come down. And this is where, in real life, I sat down the controller and said, let's go. So I put the controller down right here. If we see his harm animation, we know that we are onward to the final battles. This is kind of like the uh, final boss of the game, Bulk here. This one took the most strategy, the most planning, the most manipulation of the gear and trying different things to make it work. That's the, the essence and spirit of of the challenge run so that was uh this one is a great showcase for that for a weak party using some uh, knowledge of the game and and sometimes just sheer luck to get through it so now we're heading on to the final battles of the game if you like these videos hit that thumbs up button subscribe leave me a comment twitter active underscore ate